Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think. Lithium ion batteries or hydrogen fuel cells to power our vehicles. Until recently that was the extent of the debate in the EV enthusiast community. But just when you think the battle for supremacy is between two major technologies, along come a bunch of other market disruptors like graphene, sodium ion, supercapacitors, ultra capacitors and solid state batteries. And it's the last of these solid state batteries that look like becoming a commercially viable product, maybe even as early as 2020. So as usual, I'm keen to learn how it all works and why solid state is better than liquid state. So these electrolytes then, in a lithium ion battery, and frankly most other types of battery, they're usually either a liquid or a polymer, which is a sort of gel. And guess what? In solid state batteries, the electrolytes are not liquid, but solid. There's a massive amount of research going on all over the world to try and find the best materials for these solid electrolytes. Scientists are testing all sorts of things like glass, ceramics, and lithium sulfide amongst others. But why? Lithium ion batteries seem to have been a massive commercial success for over 30 years. So what's the problem? Well, firstly, there's that short circuit thing I mentioned earlier. A short circuit in a lithium ion battery is definitely not something you want. An unexpected trouser surprise can mean many things, all of which usually involve some level of embarrassment, especially as you get older. But when that surprise is a mobile phone spontaneously combusting with the ferocity of an incendiary device, then it's less of an embarrassment and more of an existential crisis. And it's the liquid electrolytes that are the culprit, all of which are generally extremely flammable. Apparently it's all to do with the dendrites. It turns out dendrites are a bit like stalactites and stalagmites in caves, little bits of material that slowly build up over time to become long filaments. Inside a lithium ion battery, these dendrites are built up from lithium, which grows on the anode. In extreme cases, they can grow so long that they can pierce through the separator and touch the cathode on the other side. When that happens, you've got a short circuit, a dead battery, and very possibly an inconvenient conflagration. So if a solid, non-flammable, stable alternative can be found, you immediately get a dramatic improvement in safety. It also means you can squeeze everything together so you use less space. And that's good news no matter what you're using, whether it's a car, a mobile phone, or a laptop. And then there's energy density. Some of these companies are claiming that they can achieve up to three times the energy density of the best lithium ion batteries on the market today. So who are the main players in this battle for global supremacy? Well, there's Japan's big car and battery companies for a start. Toyota, Honda, Nissan and Panasonic are in a partnership called Consortium for Lithium Ion Battery Technology and Evaluation Center, or LibTech, and they're backed by $14 million of government money. LibTech hopes to develop a solid state battery that doubles the range of electric vehicles to 800 kilometers or about 500 miles by 2030 over the current 400 kilometers or 250 miles. For the time being though, it's targeting a more modest range of about 550 kilometers or 340 miles by 2025. Then you've got Hyundai in South Korea and they seem to be really taking a lead in developing all available options for clean energy and transport as we saw in the previous program. They've invested in Ionic Materials, which is a US-based materials technology company developing a solid polymer electrolyte that they claim will enable low-cost and high-performing solid-state batteries. No firm dates for release yet, but watch this space. Not to be outdone, the European car makers are also having a crack at solid-state technology. VW has thrown $100 million of investment into a company called QuantumScape. If they're successful, then the range of the existing e-Golf that we looked at a couple of weeks ago could more than double from 300 kilometers or about 186 miles to 750 kilometers or more like 466 miles. And Volkswagen are targeting a market release for this of 2025. BMW is teamed up with a company called Solid Power and they're hoping to open their battery cell competence center in 2019 to develop new energy storage technology. BMW are suggesting that they'll have a solid state battery powered EV ready for market by 2026. Then we get to the independent, some might say maverick, developers and entrepreneurs. Chief among these are James Dyson and Henrik Fisker. Dyson knows a thing or two about batteries and motors thanks to decades of extremely successful cutting edge research and development 
into vacuum cleaners, fans and hand dryers and the like. In 2015, Dyson bought SAT-T3, a company that's been developing solid state technology and who back in 2014 announced that they'd achieved a battery with an energy density of 400 watt hours per kilogram, which compares very favorably to the best lithium ion batteries available today, the ones that Tesla use in their cars, which have an energy density of 230 watt hours per kilogram. Dyson are really going for this in a big way with a two billion pound or $2.7 billion investment in the batteries and potentially three new electric vehicles planned for release by 2020. Henrik Fisker is an automotive designer and entrepreneur who can count the BMW Z8, Aston Martin DB9, Aston V8 Vantage and the Fisker Karma amongst his achievements. His Fisker Inc company is developing a new vehicle called the E-Motion which will use all solid state battery technology. Fisker have recently ramped up their activity to try to bring their original launch date of 2023 forward to 2020, presumably in response to the growing competition amassing around him. The final slot has to be reserved for the massively undervalued genius and father of the lithium ion battery, Mr. John Bannister Goodenough. Back in 1980, Goodenough and a team of chemists at Oxford made several key breakthroughs, including the use of cobalt for the cathode which brought lithium ion batteries into reality. He got ripped off by one of his research partners at the time and as a result, he never saw a penny for his invention. An invention now so ubiquitous that our modern lifestyles would be almost impossible without it. In recognition of his achievements and the fact that he's still going at the age of nearly 96, John gets pride of place right at the top of our Muppet Genius chart. And he hasn't finished yet. In 2018, Good enough, in partnership with Professor of Engineering Physics at the University of Porto, Maria Helena Braga, another candidate for the Genius Board, published a paper in the Journal of the American Chemical Society. Their paper claims a solid state battery that operates at room temperature, has double the energy density of existing lithium ion batteries, can be fast charged and fast discharged, has a plasticizer to help it react to changes in volume and store lithium ions, uses a low cost cathode, so no more need for cobalt to be mined from dubious countries like the DRC, can be charged up to five volts, has a life cycle of 23,000 charges, which equates to charging your mobile phone every day for 63 years without killing your battery, and that actually increases its capacity with the number of charging cycles. But wait, I hear you cry, how can it possibly achieve this last claim? Surely that goes against all the fundamental principles of conservation of energy. Aha, quite simple really. According to John and Helena, this happens because the Li plus minus glass is not reduced on contact with metallic lithium, thus no passivating interference layer contributes to a capacity fade. Instead, the discharge capacity increases with cycle number as a result of dipole polarization in the Li plus minus glass electrolyte, leading to a capacity increase of the Li plus minus glass plasticizer electrostatic double layer capacitor. And if you have any ideas about what any of that might mean, please send your answers on a postcard to what the fuck. In slightly simpler terms that you and I can get our minds around, they appear to be claiming that their new breakthrough overcomes every single problem of current battery technology. Many people are skeptical that all this will turn out to be true, but the research has undergone and is continuing to undergo peer review, which is how good science progresses. So I think at this stage, the best thing we can do is to keep an open mind and hope that old Johnny be good enough has actually nailed another world changing phenomenon. There's no doubt it's an exciting time in the world of renewable energy, but in the midst of all this optimism, it's worth remembering that all this is in the context of a global population utilizing one and a half planets worth of resources every year and increasing their use of fossil fuels and CO2 emissions all the time. A combination of calamities that doesn't show any sign whatsoever of slowing down anytime soon and which is demonstrably unsustainable even to the most ardent denier. This coming Monday, the 8th of October 2018, the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, are due to release their Interim Climate Progress Report ahead of the COP24 meeting in Katowice in Poland in December. I'll be taking a close look at that report when it comes out, and then after that, we'll be focusing on the really huge scale clean energy technologies currently in development 
that will vie to become the powerhouses of our global civilization as we move through the 21st century. That's it for this week though. Please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted whenever a new program comes out. And you can do that by clicking this link here. As always, thanks very much for watching. Have a great week. And remember to just have a think. See you next week.